Bonjour, hola, hello and welcome to the Car Diaries and episode 10. We are finally in double digits and we've got two hot hatches here. So we are at Jim Reed Vehicles just outside of Aberdeenshire. He has kindly given us his beautiful customer experience vehicle which is a Mark 7.5 Golf R DSG and on the other side here we have my Mark 7.5 Golf GTI Performance and a manual. So two cars which people often look at and compare so in this video we're going to be talking you through how the cars compare between one another, the various differences, what we love, what we don't like and seeing what these cars are all about. So without further ado let's get started. So firstly we're going to start off with a direct comparison of the front end of the two vehicles. So let's firstly kick things off with the Golf R. So of course we've got the beautiful chrome detailing, chrome strip right across the front. We've then got the R badging and we have the lovely gloss black lower front splitter details in the car which I really really like. Comparing that with the GTI, of course we've got the red detailing which always pays tribute to GTIs of the past. We've then got the little red details and the lights there as well. Of course, the GTI badging. And your front end is done in a matte finish as opposed to the gloss black that you find in the R. I actually prefer the gloss black. I know the Club Sport of the Mark 7 variant um, of the GTI had everything in gloss black. I much prefer that in all honesty. Um, but we've got sort of almost honeycomb style um, front grille on the GTI, whereas it's more vented on the Golf R. So working our way around, wheels on the car, We've got the standard wheels on both of these vehicles, so obviously you can upgrade to the 19 inch wheels. These are the 18 inch wheels as standard in both cars, but slightly different design in each of them. So this is um, very nice on the Golf R. It's been followed through from the Mark 7 variant. They've not really changed much about the wheels, but worked really nicely. You've then got the gloss black calipers as standard on the R with the R detailing. We've got the beautiful satin silver mirror casings which I think are a really really nice touch and as you can see Jim Reed has had this vehicle all liveried up so this is a customer experience car so if any of you are interested in a hot hatch we're going to take a little look later on at some of the hot hatches that are available here for sale at Jim Reed Motor Vehicles um, but this car is available for test drive if you are genuinely in the market for a Golf R so please do get in touch with the guys we'll put a little uh, link in the description below for you to click on. Now as we work our way around We've also got the same rear lights on both of the cars. We've then got the R badging, or the GTI badging, of course, in the GTI, but down at the bottom rear diffuser of the car is where it really differs. So we've got the quad pipes on the Golf R here. Again, we've got the gloss black detailing, whereas on the GTI we've got matte black detailing and we've just got the twin pipes, so one on either side, albeit they are that little bit larger. So coming right away around now, and we'll take a look inside the car. So as I mentioned earlier on in the video, one of the main things to note is this is a DSG, the GTI is a manual. So we're going to be exploring these gearboxes in a little bit more detail, talking about how, how they compare and, and ultimately what we think is the better gearbox. So we've got full digital TFT display in both cars, that's standard kit in the car, heated seats in both cars, again standard kit. That's something I love about the Golf range is you get so much technology as standard when you're comparing with the likes of BMW and Mercedes and Audi, which you have to tick boxes to specify most of these items. So we've got a sort of Alcantara and cloth um, two-tone interior in the Golf R. So it's full standard interior, which is really, really nicely kitted out. You can upgrade for around about two grand to leather seats, but unless you're really picking love the leather detailing, I don't think you really need them. In the GTI, of course, we have slightly different interior again. So we've got the very traditional themed tartan interior. Um, so we've got the red detailing in the GTI, which I love. I do really, really like this detail just because it pays tribute to GTIs of the past. We've also got that unique golf ball gear knob there as well. Again, reminding you that you are in a golf, which if you did specify the, uh, the manual gearbox on the R, you'd have that as well. And of course, both of these vehicles are the five door variants as well. Three doors, of course, are available. So taking a look on the side profile of the GTI here, you'll notice the standard GTI wheels, which is my car. I'm not a massive fan of. I'd much prefer the upgraded 19 inch wheels. I believe the guys here at Jim Reed Motor Vehicles are actually just bringing in a car with the 19 inch wheels, a GTI performance. So worth checking out their website for that. 
We've then got the red calipers, which I love. I think that's something the Golf R is missing um, with the standard gloss um, black calipers. You can't actually even um, upgrade them to red. Red is specifically for the GTI, but I really, really like that. Again, the GTI badging on the side and then come right round to the rear. Yeah, I think that rear end looks mega with the, the twin pipes there as well. So again, very much down to personal preference, but let's take the cars out for a blast. GTI first and find out what these things are all about. So welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Golf R. And quite an exciting one for me actually. I've had the, uh, the GTI for about four months now. Um, I got it back in March and I've never actually driven the Mark 7.5 Golf R. So, having gotten used to the GTI, it's going to be quite a, an enjoyable drive. So instantly, I can feel the difference with the steering. So you've got to remember that this is Volkswagen's four motion system, so it's four wheel drive. So yeah, it definitely feels quite different front end wise, even at slow speeds, we're only doing 30 miles an hour. Um, and I've only, made about three turns so far but yeah you can feel it straight away through the steering wheel which is it's quite interesting I wasn't expecting that of course we've got Volkswagen's DSG gearbox it's a box I know very well I've had numerous cars in the past with that box my Cupra had uh, an early um, generation of the DSG box um, I had a Mark 7 GTD for about two years as well and it also had DSG box so yeah I know it pretty well um, and it's it's a tremendous gearbox to be fair. DSG, of course, standing for dual shift gearbox. So it's a dual clutch system, so it's very, very quick. And you've got these little paddles on the steering wheel here. That's one little thing that I must say I'm not 100% on. The paddles are pretty small on a old Volkswagen product. Um, so yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to, to be honest with you, but we'll get there. So let's get out of town um, and onto some more scenic roads and see what this car is all about. But yeah, going through town, as I say, first thing I've noticed is the steering. Quite different to the GTI. Um, I'm trying to work out what is different about it. I, I think it's probably, let's see, there's a turn here. I, don't, I think it feels a little bit a little bit lighter than the GTI, which is interesting because the GTI is a lighter car overall, but obviously it's putting the power out through the front wheels just. So, and mine being the performance one, it's got the diff as well. So yeah, quite interesting. So we're coming on to a nicer road now. So I'm going to change the modes, which you do down here in the centre console. So, oh, we've got a race mode in this. So I've not got that in the GTI either. So we eco normal race and individual. Individual, obviously you can tweak um, yourself to whatever your settings you fancy. But yeah, race mode, I've only got sport in the GTI, so let's see how race mode is. So we're going to flick the gearbox across into manual, drop down a couple of gears using these paddles. And uh, let's see what we think. So we're going around this way. Yeah, it handles nicely in the roundabout. Oh yeah, you can feel the throttle instantly. Oh yeah, that goes well. That goes really well. Yes, I like it. Ah oh, shit. I hope I've not made the wrong decision with this GTI. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really good. Well, let's fuck it into sport mode in the auto gearbox. What the hell? Took a wee second down there, uh, there with the, the drop down pedal, which is it's quite interesting actually. I thought it'd be, be quicker than that. Dropping down, let's try that again. Slow right down. These roads are lovely and quiet, which is perfect. Don't know if you'll be able to make that out on the camera, but the exhaust definitely burbling a little bit. Yeah, 
Yeah, very, very good. And the gear shifts are instant when you're, yeah, up, up. They're very, very, very quick, especially when you're in this race mode. But let's get out of that into the more normal settings and uh, back into auto, there we go. So auto modes in this, you can enable, and this is something again I really like about um, Volkswagen, um, is if you want to pop it back into auto, you can either flick the gear lever down here or you can pull the right paddle towards you um, for about three seconds and that does exactly the same thing. Um, so if you accidentally touch the paddle and you want to bump it back into auto mode, just pull that right hand paddle towards you for three seconds. You'll see it says off on it, which basically means it's, it's switching off the, the manual mode um, and popping you straight back into auto. So nice little feature, because a lot of manufacturers like Porsche, I always find it's a bit frustrating whenever you accidentally hit a paddle and you've got to kind of play around with the gear lever. Um, you can't do that, so it's, it's nice that they've got that. But yeah, when you're just cruising along, I think it, it feels very, very similar. So this car has a standard suspension set up, standard R suspension set up, the same as my GTI has. Neither of the cars have the um, adaptive dampers, which I believe is an 800 quid option, um, which we'll need to try and get a hold of a car with adaptive dampers at some point to, to try, because from what I've heard, um, it does make quite a difference and it's, it's a nice option to have, but I'm from Glasgow and I'm pretty tight, so I don't want to spend the money on that. And like magic, we're in the GTI performance. It's a little bit cheesy, isn't it? But we'll keep that in. So yeah, welcome to the GTI performance. Now let's compare this car to the Golf R and really know what the differences are. So first things first, an obvious one, transmission. So this car has, as I mentioned earlier, the six speed manual gearbox. Um, obviously the DSG box is available for um, GTI as well but I decided to specify the manual for a little bit more fun, I thought, um, in, in this particular car. So, six speed manual instead of the seven speed dual clutch auto gearbox. Now, the manual's really, really nice box. The clutch isn't too heavy. Um, the gears themselves, um, nice short shift. Um, and yeah, you can sort of blip down and it's just a, a really, really nice gearbox to sort of play around with. So. Being the performance version of the GTI, this car, of course, it's front wheel drive, but it's actually also got a front diff as standard um, as part of the performance pack. So it really helps you put out the power around the corners. So what we're gonna do, whilst we're on a nice bit of road, is make sure we're in sport mode, which is the most aggressive mode in the GTI, so there is no race mode. And we'll open this car up a little bit. goes really really well you can definitely feel the front diff helping put the power down yeah it goes really really nicely the one thing I would say is if you're comparing it to the Golf R it, you do get that little bit of wheel spin every now and then um, which you know the car manages with it and co copes with the power very well, but 245 horsepower through the front wheels is a lot of power to deal with. Whereas the Golf R, obviously with the 300 horsepower, um, I think it just puts it out far, far easier um, considering it's put out through the uh, the four wheels. And it, it just always feels like the car never really struggles and you, you don't feel like you're really pushing the Golf R that hard. I think it'd be quite a difficult car um, to really push to the limit. Whereas the GTI Performance, I think you could have it at the limit quite quickly if you wanted to. Um, but some people would argue that that perhaps makes it even more enjoyable and even more fun. And some people like taking it right to that, that light. So I've done a few thousand miles in this car now. I can confidently talk you through the various modes in the car and how they how they differ from those in the, the Golf R. So as I mentioned to you, you have your eco mode, you have your normal mode, sport mode, and individual. Um, whereas in the Golf R, instead of sport, you have race mode. Now, being a manual, you wouldn't think that the modes would change that much, but actually they really still do. So albeit obviously the, the gearbox isn't affected, your throttle response um, is affected 
drastically in your various modes. So if you're in eco mode, it really limits um, the throttle response. Not too much so, because I know um, cars like BMW, they've got their eco pro mode, which as far as I'm concerned, is pretty shit because it almost limits um, your throttle response so much that it's just almost undrivable. You've almost got no power whatsoever. Whereas when you're in eco mode in the Golf, you've still got a bit of power if you, if you want it there but you're not utilizing all the car's performance. Normal mode is perfect for pretty much every day. And then sport mode definitely sharpens up the throttle response. It also um, feeds some of the induction noise into the cabin as well. So everyone kind of goes on about the, the fake noises um, from the, the new Golf product. Yeah, a lot of noise is kind of pumped into the, the cabin um, to try and en enhance the, the, the feeling. You know, at the end of the day, these are four cylinder cars, they're never going to sound like a, a natural aspirated Lamborghini V10, um, but as far as I'm concerned for a hot hatch, they sound pretty good. Um, and I think a GTI, you know, with something as simple as perhaps a, a resonator delete, um, you know, which is, is fairly straightforward to do, um, I think that would really help to uh, enhance the soundtrack of the car. Uh, and likewise, the same with the Golf R. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's quite a, a difference um, in the steering in the GTI, and you notice that as soon as you're behind the wheel of it. So GTI is obviously considerably lighter than the Golf R. Uh, main reason, of course, for that is you've got the 4MATIC system in the Golf, which adds quite a bit of additional weight to the car. Whereas the fact that the, the GTI is purely front wheel drive, it helps to keep the, the weight down. So whilst we're on the topic of the four wheel drive system, the, the four wheel drive system in the Golf R actually protrudes into the rear luggage um, compartment a little bit. So if you open the boot four up on the GTI, you have quite a bit of space under there for additional storage. If you do so in the Golf R, you actually lose 37 litres of storage space. And that's due to the four wheel drive system, um, obviously controlling the, the power and the rear wheels in the car. And that just eats into um, some of the space. So that's another thing to sort of bear in mind and, and, and factor in. Albeit, you know, obviously you can fold, fold the rear seats and things down and that allows you some extra room. But yeah, steering wise, this car just feels a lot more nimble, I would say, more chuckable. Um, albeit, I think the Golf R feels as if it would stick to the road better. Um, the GTI feels like probably a better car on the B roads and things like that. Um, and it's just a bit more of an experience, I think, overall. But yeah, you, you know, it's one of these things, it's, it's each to their own. I think the Golf R has its benefits, um, especially in wet weather conditions, um, over the GTI. And then in a nice dry, um, you know, open B road, I think the GTI, you know, has its perks over the Golf R. But it is probably six and a half a dozen. So when you come down to the power of the cars, as you know, both cars uh, feature that two liter TSI um, turbocharged four cylinder engine, which I think is a, a fantastic unit from Volkswagen. So there's meant to be roughly, give or take, about 50, 55 horsepower of a difference between the two cars. However, what you have to remember is the Golf R is quite a bit heavier than the GTI, and you definitely feel that um, you know, th throughout the car's drive. So, Albeit the R is quicker off the line, mainly due to the four wheel drive system, it puts the power out a lot easier. Once you're actually on the move, you know, from sort of 30 to 60 miles per hour, or 30 to 70 miles per hour rolling start, I think there's very, very little in the two cars. Um, mainly down to the gearbox, obviously, in the manual car, um, the Golf R is ever so slightly quicker, but I think if you'd opted for the DSG box on the GTI, I think they would be very, very similarly, um, you know, um, similarly, 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 what would you say, similarly? Similar performance cars. Yep. That's what I'd say. What would you say? Similarly performing cars. So I think in conclusion, both cars are fantastic. I think ultimately, if it was for a very comfortable everyday daily driver that's good in all conditions, I would probably go for the Golf R in all honesty. However, if you want a car that's fantastic on the little twisty B roads and you can throw around, perhaps take to the occasional track day, and it's just that little bit different, I would go for the GTI. And regardless of which vehicle you go for, I think it's safe to say 
both cars are going to put a massive grin on your face. They both look great, they both sound great, they both drive brilliantly, and they're both quite understated. So, you know, if you park up somewhere, no one's really going to bother you, apart from the odd petrol head, who'll give you a little smile and acknowledge your taste in cars. Now, I hope this review has been useful. If you've got any comments or any questions, please comment down below. We'd be delighted to hear from you and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks very much for watching and make sure to subscribe. And like it so, we are in the GTI performance. The f we're in the GTI performance. No. I like so, we're in the GTI performance. I like magic, we're in the GTI performance. I like that, we're in the GTI performance. <laughs> and like that. It's <laughs> 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 just the way you just like, you're like, I give up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>